Usually when I'm called into a job, it's bad electrical, bad plumbing structure, you name it. But what made this job different was geothermal cooling and heating technology. This is a new system. I want to know if permits were pulled. The average temperature of the Earth is around 14 degrees Celsius. We have vertical loops that go into the ground. We're running liquids through those pipes that become that temperature. We bring them into the house, into that geothermal unit. We can now heat and cool the home efficiently. I'm bringing in the geothermal guys. Yeah. So what we want to do is find out where the hell they dug the wells. We're yeah. going to have to talk to them first, because okay. I don't want to just dig blindly and right. say, you know, hey, look, we found worms. Yeah. <laughs> Geothermal systems, the, the way that you really benchmark the piece of equipment is based on what's going on in the actual loop itself. So what we need to be able to do is actually take a pressure temperature reading right here on the equipment. Yeah. And what you would typically find is a peat sport, and that will tell us whether this piece of equipment is operating correctly. And internally, there's just issues everywhere. Simple little things like when you look at where the flow center is connected here, you can see we've got solid connections. But yet when we look at the return one, we've got silliness like we've got this red tubing, right? This should be a straight connection going out all the way through. And for some reason, they've decided they wanted to put in some red garden hose. I mean, the equipment may run, but that doesn't mean anything. It's like a, an air conditioner. You can have an air conditioner that runs. If it doesn't cool the air, who cares? Right. You know, we really need to get to the bottom of well, this. Well, it sounds like it's working. Right? Yeah, well, you running. can hear it running. Yeah, if the fan's turning, that doesn't mean it's working. Okay, <laughs> so you're going to go through this, and then you're going to tell me what you find. And I already know we're taking it out, but I'm really curious to see what they've done wrong. Right. Everything we've seen so far is a little messed up, isn't it? One thing that was, I think, of real concern is the fact that the lines were buried so shallow. And what are we at, about a foot, foot and a half here? Yeah, generally, we. We looked at the whole site, and that's about what everything was, was buried at. It's just about one foot below ground level, which um, kind of sends up some red flags. The other thing that's a real concern is that all of this is right in the tree roots. Anytime anyone ever does anything on the, this property, if they go to dig in another tree or a shrub or uh, if there's any utilities, right. point. they'll be right into these lines. Which what you're saying is I don't think you want to attach to this. No, I think we've seen enough to know that we're probably uncomfortable with doing that. I think that's the best call. So now that we've decided that the loop field is not reusable, the geothermal guys can fuse the old lines together to make sure nothing leaches back into the ground. Another thing, too, is maybe just grab onto that, that line right there, Damon. Oh, is that ever hot? Right. And, and that um, this machine hasn't run for several days. Good and yet, point. And yet you can feel how hot those lines are. So this heat is actually convecting from the electric water heater that this is attached uh -huh. to. So that could explain some of the high utility bills that they have, because right. actually it's taking heat from the hot water heater and running it the opposite way. Instead of using the geothermal, it's actually running off that. Right, yeah. So really busy day today. We have the new geothermal unit here, which means we can put the house back together, get the homeowners back home. Well, the piping that we're putting in now, we're just making sure that the pressure drop is minimal, uh, trying to keep as few 90-degree uh, elbows as possible between here and outside. And uh, yeah, making sure too that it's, it's properly insulated and that all the uh, tail ends of the insulation are, are properly sealed so there's no chance of any condensation happening and uh, coming down through the, uh, the finished ceiling when that's all said and done. Now, a rotary drill is used to bore into the ground 10 feet at a time. Water is then fed down the center of the pipe, and this forces the earth from the hole up to the surface. So as soon as we complete drilling each hole, we have to pull all our rods out one at a time, and then we go ahead and we put our loop down the hole. It's lowered down with a winch cable, drops the loop to the bottom of the hole, and then we basically just pull that back out with the winch, leave the loop in the ground, and then uh, onto the grouting. Today we're going to uh, dig up all of the vertical bores and then we're going to uh, bring them back uh, and manifold them all together which will distribute the water solution uh, throughout all of the pipes uh, equally. 
we will need to uh, fuse all of these into this manifold here. Right. And then uh, from there, we'll uh, put some pressure on it, make sure it's good. We'll hook a, a compressor up at the machine right. and pressure it all up, and then we'll backfill once we've tested it. Big day today. The geothermal is actually done in the yard. We have Rob from Buchanan and Hall today actually coming to turn it on. I just want to know a couple of the differences between what was here, what was stuffed under that crawl space, and what the new unit's doing for us. One of the major complaints was in regards to the noise. And when we did run that unit, there was um, a lot of noise and vibration that came from that, and that resonated right up through the floor and into their living room. Right. As you can hear, this one is running it's right, quiet. right now. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's running full out, and we're able to have a, a conversation, and it's, you know, it's almost right. about as quiet as a, as a good quality refrigerator. There's diagnostic lights that are right on the front of the machine down here, and uh, those lights read, again, if there is a fault, it will read here, but it will also read what that fault is up on the thermostat, right. and it'll store that there. If it's done properly, I mean, it's, they're a great system. a little bit about what we found. You already knew the last time I brought you here that uh, the geothermal was just below grade. So we went six holes, 135 feet deep. We did a whole new vertical loop system in your front yard, fixed it all up, and you can't even tell we were here. Like we had to come through the wall with how many runs? Six runs. Six runs altogether came through that wall. So just above this, this is where we had to feed. There's a room above, so we have to get your basic heat runs to the front of the windows. It took a lot of work. It's beautiful, it's just... Already? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm, I'm so happy already. <laughs> you remember when I first brought you in, the geothermal went out the wall right here. It was six inches beneath the, the earth, right? Yeah. It now goes out the wall down here. So it's, it's the way it's supposed to be because we brought in all the right people. We took out of the crawl space that unit that was there. We put in state of the art. This is a beautiful system. And you can see how professionally it's installed. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. it's a great Come idea on. that everything was moved from the uh, crawl space and put here. I think it's, uh, yeah. it's a much easier access and, uh, yeah. and very and, easy to use yes. as well. Yes. By the way. What I love about this system is that we are taking Earth's natural temperature and we're raising it by a couple of degrees, putting it throughout your house. So it doesn't cost a lot to do it. At the same time, as we're heating to 140, we'll put it into a holding tank. Now this holding tank, instead of wasting it, because we are cycling, think of how that water goes, this now assists your hot water tank. It's no matter what they promise to do, uh, they will always deliver. And that's what they say, you are the most lucky people, because that's my homes with his team fixing the house. And this is things that no money can buy. Are you happy? Yes. Yes, yes happy. I'm more than happy. Come on. It's then I'm like, happy. Yes. And I think we did yes. our job right. Thank you very much. My yeah. pleasure. Thank you.